I wanted my then husband and his extramarital, the person who's having this affair, he was having an affair with, I wanted them to burn in hell. I thought, well, you know, you did this to me, you're destroying my family, I just want you to burn in hell. And she said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. That is not what God wants for them. In fact, I need you to start praying for them. You need to forgive them and you need to pray for them. And do you know that is a hard thing to do when somebody's burned you really bad? And I used to say, well, well, God, if I have to, we'll just, I had an attitude with it. I said, God, just, okay, God, I just pray blessings over them. And that was it. Welcome to Along the Way. I'm John Matarazzo, your host and fellow traveler. Thank you for joining me along my way as I try to become more like Jesus every day. One of the many blessings that I've had since I started this podcast is the friends that I have made along the way. One of my favorite sayings is that when God wants to bless you, he will bring someone into your life. And when God wants to protect you, he will often take someone out of your life. I can honestly say that I have had a lot of people enter into my life recently, and that is an obvious blessing. My friend Doug Stringer was on my real life TV program recently, and I was looking forward to reconnecting with him in person again. He told me that he was really excited to have his wife Lisa coming with him this time, and that she had written a book entitled, God Did Not Do This To Me. He asked me if I would like to interview her this time, whenever they were in town, to be on Real Life. I knew a little bit of her story from the few times that we had briefly met in the past, but Lisa has had quite an adventure in her faith, and you will be encouraged by her journey. I'll get to that conversation in just a moment, but I want to thank you for listening to Along the Way. I hope that you like what you hear and you will subscribe. You can connect with me online as well. All of my socials and contact links are in the show notes. You can check out all of my episodes at my website, alongtheway.media. I would love to hear from you and where you're listening from. And now, here is my Along the Way conversation with Lisa Stringer. Lisa Stringer, thank you so much for allowing me to join you along your way as we're going to be talking about your journey with the Lord and how God has brought you to where you are today as well. Your name might sound a little bit familiar to people that have listened to episodes of Along the Way in the past because her husband, Doug Stringer, has been on Along the Way. If you want to go back and listen to that episode, I'll definitely put a link to that in the show notes so you can check that out. But it was one of the most transformational conversations that I've had since starting this podcast, and that's why I re-aired it in the Christmas break whenever I took a little bit of time off. But Lisa, it's great to have you along the way. It's a blessing to be here. I'm excited to be sharing with your audience. Yeah, we've had Doug on the Real Life program a number of times, and I've gotten to meet you through you just coming with him, and uh, but you've been kind of behind the camera and just talking off the set. But you've got a book that is really uh, a good bit, a good bit of your life story. So we're going to get you booked on Real Life at some point soon, which is great, great to have you back. But we get, to, we get a chance to talk about that right now. So, Lisa, if you wouldn't mind, if you would just tell me how God has led you to where you are today. I'll uh, start back just a little bit, try to make it as brief as possible. I uh, grew up in a Christian household, but much like a lot of uh, Christians that go to church on Sunday and never pick up the Bible again until the following Sunday. And so when the pastor says, hey, would you look up, for instance, John 3.16, I'm like, man, is John in the Old Testament or the New (laughs) Testament? (laughs) And so you're trying to follow along. You live a decent life of, you know, you're not cursing, you're not, you know, in my case, not drinking, not smoking, thinking you're benevolent and you're kind and you're not stealing, so I'm going to go to heaven. I was a young girl who was focused on being successful, wanted to be in radio, went off to California and found great success, Mm. uh, worked really hard, and through some trials and tribulations, stumbled, fell, and because of a a great fall and great accountability, I was directed to the Lord Jesus Christ Mm. and then began what I would consider a true relationship with him, which was my experience of saying, now I truly am transformed and now I understand what it means to be saved. Yeah. Through that journey, uh, met a wonderful man of God, <laughs> uh-huh, <laughs> have uh-huh. a, a great family, and uh, went through a trial with cancer. Uh, my husband walked through a trial with cancer, and that is where this particular book that you're mentioning yeah. today was birthed. It's called God Did Not Do This to Me, Finding Hope, Courage, and Faith to Face Our Toughest Challenge. And it's yeah. basically a story from a caregiver's perspective of walking through a stage four lymphoma diagnosis, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma mm-hmm 
-hmm. diagnosis with not knowing what direction, you know, is, is, sure. is there going to be life or is there going to be death? You know, you believe for the best. And so in the midst of sharing this story, I'm able to share um, scripture, share the ups and downs, just very candid experiences that I believe can help people and encourage people, not just who are battling cancer, but have, you know, troubles along the way as yeah, all of us do. Absolutely. And there's things that we can learn that God really wants us to learn all throughout the journey of our life and all, all along the way. Yes, pun intended. But you said something that piqued my interest and I went to South Africa for a radio school and you have a bit of a radio journey. Can I ask you a little bit about what brought you into radio and what God did in that season of your life? Absolutely. I grew up in a, I'm Hispanic, born in the United States and uh, love America, you know, but, but uh, back in the when I was growing up, it would have been in the 70s and 80s. There was still a lot of racial tension, if you will, okay. although not as crazed. It, there just wasn't a lot of you didn't see a lot of brown skin sure. or or you know darker skin on television or radio. And so I always was a go getter. I was an achiever, and I just for whatever reason was fascinated to you know to be in radio. Studied to be. Uh, in television and okay. then end up getting an offer to be in, in radio and promotions. And I end up being vice president of programming and promotions for wow. a major radio group out of Southern California. So I actually was a program director. I worked with a lot of people that you yeah. currently see and hear on secular television and radio. And it was prior to, again, my true transformation and mm -hmm. having a relationship with Christ. During that season, I was the first female program director to run a top 40 station in America. Wow. So I thought I achieved the success because I worked 17 hour days. I hustled. <laughs> I worked that's, that's hard. Not, there's not a lot more extra time in that. No, no. there isn't. No, sleep uh, was not, you know, it was only because I had to, yeah. to sleep. It wasn't something that was a priority. And I guess I say all that to say I had reached financial success, success in the world's eyes. Mm -hmm. um, I had money. I had cars. I had a lot of amenities. I had sure. first-class tickets everywhere I wanted. I'd fly from L.A. to New York to have breakfast with Mariah Carey and then fly back you know, or I'm just trying to compute what you just said. Yeah. 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 I take a red eye, just, you know, have a breakfast meet, you know, with, you know, right, a few right. other radio wow. people and fly back. And the same thing, I could name a whole lot of people that would be very familiar to a lot of people yeah. in the world. And I thought I'd earned all that success. Hmm. I worked hard. And so when you and I were talking about, and I know the theme of your program, I was thinking, man, if you talk about it, you know, Damascus Road experience right, for right. me, or, you know, I, I really thought I had earned all that. Never mm. did I realize now when I look back in retrospect, it was Jesus that opened the doors for me. Yeah. Even in the midst of my maybe not walking in obedience down the road he wanted for me, I believe that he opened the doors for me. Mm -hmm. He protected me. I think back at opportunities that I had, doors that he opened and doors that he shut. I think about riding in the cars with celebrities, you know, because my car was in one location. They offered to give me a ride. And I remember, you know, one of the celebrities told me, hey, I need to make a stop. And we stopped at a hotel and I got out of the car for a minute. He popped the trunk and all kinds of inappropriate things were in that trunk oh, that, no. would, that if we would have been stopped, I'm in the car, right. more than likely I would have been arrested. Yeah. So I believe even that in the midst of that craziness and my disobedience, God's always seeking you. He's seeking after every one of us all the time. And um, I believe he was always reaching out to me, but I just ignored him. Yeah. And in the midst of it all, yet of my ignoring him, he still protected me. I love how God is so faithful with that, even when we're not faithful at all, when we don't even realize that he's walking with us. You know, I talk about the Emmaus Road and how Jesus is walking with us, but we're just blind to it. And you're talking about a Damascus road yeah. where I hope that Jesus doesn't knock me off my high horse and to, mm -hmm. just to get my attention. I hope it's a little bit more subtle than that. But you're alluding to, to a little bit of that. How did you make that connection to the next step of well, being with the Lord? And to say both, because I had both, yeah, you know, yeah. um, the Emmaus road was not giving God the credit mm. where God deserved the credit. Uh, there were a number of times where that happened to me. The Damascus Road for me was um, my walking in just disobedience in the sense that I always, I always thought it was me, 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 my way, my way, my way, and I know better than God. How could God know what's good for me? Yeah. I'm the one living it. I'm the one sweating it out. I'm the one that's working hard. 
And we make those simple mistakes because we're not in relationship with Christ. We're right. not washing our mind with the Word of God. And I was sharing with you earlier today that I believe that I can give people grace, not justifying by any means mm -hmm. their sin, but I give people the grace. And my husband's one to always remind me, give people grace, yeah. pray for them instead of judging them, pray for them, definitely mourn for where they're at. But instead of just constantly criticizing, let's invest in prayer that God would truly do a transformation in their lives. In that, I was about 30 years old and single and never had been married, still walking a life of purity because that was instilled in me. For mm. some reason, I believe a lot of people prayed me through that too, <laughs> that in a business where everyone's doing everything right. inappropriate. And Whatever everything, you can do to get ahead. Absolutely. And everything that goes against the word of God, I managed to still stay pure. I married the first person that really wanted to not abuse me. Mm. And so I walked, unfortunately, six years after that, I was abandoned, uh, uh -huh. turned out out that he was in relationship with someone he worked with. And although I asked if he would still continue that I'd forgive, you know, can we continue in this relationship? And I was only able to do that because I had an accountability partner mm -hmm. who taught me what the word of God says and says, you forgive, you fight for your marriage. Yeah. And um, all that to say, he said, absolutely not. And so that was my Damascus Road experience oh, wow. in all sincerity. That was where I said, God, apparently I did try to do this all on my own. I didn't ask you, is this the person I'm supposed to marry? I just said, this is whom I'm going to, I want to marry and I want you to bless it. And it's a gamble not mm. to say that it, you know, someone else who's walked that, that it didn't work out for them. It just was a gamble and I shouldn't have done it. And it is what it is. Um, that was where I went to my knees and said, God, I can't do this. I'm so sorry I failed you. And he began to reveal himself to me in such a beautiful way. Yeah. And he called me clean and he called me beautiful and he called me princess, everything that I needed to be. And he called me his. And through that, I began to get discipled and I began to read the word of God. And then I began to hear God mm -hmm. in ways I'd never heard him before. I get teary eyed now just telling you because I long to hear from him all the time. Yeah. And I just think, wow, if I can save someone out there that's listening now with regards to relationship, if you are feeling desperate because you're getting older and you still say, man, I'm single and uh, I just feel like I just need to date or, or it's a situation with regards to a family member or a job, don't settle for anything less than the best that God has for you. I'm beautifully and wonderfully married now. I'm going on 11 years in a couple of months to a mighty man of God. And it is just, it's priceless when yeah. you do it with God. When God is at the center, it's priceless. So I encourage you, my friends, <laughs> wait for just this amazing experience in anything that God can give you when you really uh, take time to listen to Him. Right. And God's timing is perfect, even though he doesn't operate on our timetables like we want him to and he right. doesn't work on our agenda we need to align with his agenda but you which, know when patience sets in what are you talking oh, I about <laughs> i know i'm right there with you i i mean i'm 35 and i'm not married and i'm i know that struggle i know that feeling yes. very very well you said something a little bit ago that i want to just focus in on a little bit you mentioned about accountability and you mentioned about discipleship having somebody walk along with you can you talk a little bit more about what that meant in your life and how that was played out? Well, unfortunately, I say that only because I wish, I like the way Joyce Myers says, she says, you know, if we would just hear from God, he's trying to avoid us from making extra trips around the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, it wouldn't have been 40 years. It would have been four days, 10 days, yeah. whatever, to get across the Jordan. With that being said, there was somebody that I knew that loved God, was knew the Word of God, and would speak truth to me. Mm -hmm. You don't need someone that's just going to tickle your ears, as my husband says, or say what you think you want to hear. You need someone when you're going through a trial or tribulation or, or, or in the ups and the downs, not mm -hmm. just the downs, to speak truth. So I got an accountability partner that I knew was solid, that I knew I could cry to. For instance, I remember going to her and saying, Please forgive me for what I'm going to say now. Audience, you need to hear the whole show, not this. But I used to think that I wanted my, you know, my then husband and his, you know, extramarital, the person who was having this affair, he was having an affair with, I wanted them to burn in hell. I thought, well, you know, you did this to me. You're destroying my family. I yeah. just want you to burn in hell. And she said, absolutely not. Hmm. That is not what God wants for them. In fact, I need you to start praying for them. 
You need to forgive them and you need wow. to pray for them. And do you know that is a hard thing to do when somebody's burned you really bad? Yeah. And I remember at the beginning, I used to say, well, well, God, if I have to, we'll just, I had an attitude with it. I said, God, just, okay, God, I just pray blessings over them. And that was it. And then it got- <laughs> It's a start though. It That's was a start. start, but because she held me accountable and we prayed together every day and we read the word together every day. And mind you, she was in another country. Oh, wow. So we, okay. um, we did this via telephone, you know, with today's technology and WhatsApp and all these mm-hmm. other apps. You could do it for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, really. And so it you got... You made an investment into your uh, discipleship right it, there. Absolutely. And and uh, it was at the, it got to the point where I could say, okay, Lord, I bless him. And I called yeah. out his name and I bless her and I called out her name. And it got to the point where the Lord softened my heart that I could not just say it as words, but they were meant words. And yeah. to this day, even now in this program, I don't know where they are in their walk or what's going on in their lives, but I bless them. I I pray the Lord says that none should perish, but that all should have eternal life with him. So that's my prayer for them. So with regards to accountability, vital. You you see the transformation from somebody that hated to somebody that now could love who was then, in my eyes, my enemy. That couldn't have been done without an accountability partner that was leading me to the word of God. So you knew what was the right thing to do. Just didn't want to do it. You just didn't want to do it. (laughs) Yeah. What's the first step that you took in, I mean, obviously having an accountability partner was big, but getting to the point where you said, this is something that I actually want to do. And there's many steps in this process. What's that first step? Well, acknowledging Jesus as Lord and Savior. I mean, bottom line, I would tell you, I had to realize that with him, everything without him, nothing. Yeah. And the proof was in the pie right there and the pudding and the recipe right before me. Whatever I was now, be, that's yeah. right. I was now presented with, am I going to fight for my marriage or am I going to end up in a divorce and a statistic? Mm. Unfortunately, I say that because it's not God's will for that. It did end up in divorce, but not because I didn't try. Right. I forgave him. I asked him forgiveness. Um, I asked, told him I would take him back. He just never opened his eyes mm. to what you know, what God could have done. And so I would say to you, finding yourself a good accountability, acknowledging Jesus. So what's the first step? Acknowledging Jesus, acknowledging that I can't do anything without him and determining not to retract your steps. Keep moving forward. Yeah. I'm so glad that God is a redeeming God. Amen. And he he takes our worst situations, our worst circumstances, and he's going to make something good out of it. That's right. And I'm grateful that you and Doug are married now for 11 years. (laughs) And so your life with Doug and a big cancer journey, I guess, is a a good way to put it. That was kind of the catalyst to help you say, I'm going to write this book. Did it start out as a book? You know, it started out as hearing Doug minister and it actually it started out, he gets cancer and it's a stage four and diagnosis. What year is this? This would have been in 2015. Okay. He gets diagnosed in March. We start having symptoms in January. We get diagnosed uh, or go see a doctor in March. And the short of it is by the end of the year, we went from not knowing we had cancer. We have cancer. Mm-hmm. We have stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer and it's 80% aggressive. We have a short window of time to begin to choose the Mm -hmm. protocol we're going to take, whether natural or or chemotherapy or anything else, of course, the whole time with intercession, to by the end of the year being told that we're cancer-free, or not cancer-free, you're in remission is the Mm -hmm. proper term. So throughout that journey, what happened was it's much like anything else. Someone who's been through a divorce can minister to someone Mm. who's potentially going through divorce, but perhaps have their ear better. Someone who's had an abortion and knows the love of Christ can probably minister to somebody who's pondering having one and explain to them the Word of God and the love of God and the intent for that beautiful child in their womb. The same thing with cancer. I can tell you... Prior to going through this, Doug and I would go to the hospital umpteen times a year and or by phone and Mm -hmm. or conference call ministering to people. It was a complete another feeling when all of a sudden we show up at the same cancer hospital that we'd been in ICU units praying for people that are living their last hours or last moments. And now all of a sudden my husband's wearing the Mm -hmm. same ID bracelet that all of these other people had. 
it was something else. So in the process, people began to call on us because they saw through social media, one of the blessings of podcasts and other social medias is that when you're a believer, you can be encouraged by so many others as well because you're sharing your story. So we were very transparent with our story. We believed that we needed the body of Christ to help us pray. It was about the multitudes Mm -hmm. praying Mm -hmm. and bombarding heaven. The Lord hears your prayers, and I believe prayers move mountains and they touch the heart of God. And it was evident, obviously, in our story and in any story, no matter what the outcome is. I believe God moves. And so in the midst of noticing that a lot of people were leaning on us for advice, asking us, what did you do? Very cautious, as Doug has taught me to always say, look, my story may not be your story. My ending may not be at your ending, but it doesn't change who God is. And so with that being said, I just begin to journal, hence the book that is now before us that we're believing God will use to encourage many. Absolutely. And I love that, you know, the title of your book is God did not do this to me. I feel like that's a response to people saying, why aren't you blaming God? Right. And it's because God didn't do this. That's right. And, you know, and interesting on this story, and people will be able to read up a little bit on it, who said that to me, the title of this book came from Doug. Doug himself, he went off into a parking lot when we first got the, yeah. the diagnosis, and, and he had moments, Let's, if, in all sincerity, I cried, he cried. Um, oh, sure. We cried, you know, apart. Cancer's a scary word. Yeah. Even with Christ, it's not about it being scary all the time. It's about that first unknown, unexpected ball that hits you, yeah. um, you know, very hard. And so he went off into a parking lot and he spent, he says, you know, I know it was a few hours for sure, but he said he spent time with the Lord speaking to him and he came back and he gathered my family. And it was our, my daughter, my mother who lives with us and sat down with him. We were waiting for him when he returned home made it very clear and with such confidence. Now, here you have a young, a, a man, I'm calling him a young man, <laughs> my handsome man. He said, he comes back from being told you have cancer and, and, and it concerns me and I need to get you into a hospital within the next few days so that we can do further tests and determine what protocol we're going to do. At this point, we don't know what stage it's at. We just know the word cancer. And so he comes back with left with sadness. And if you can believe me, to some degree, he returned with gladness. Mm. Here's a man that could have just stayed down, depressed, uh, gone into a corner. And instead he comes back with my family present. And he says, God did not do this to me. I want to make sure you all understand that. And he said, and if he didn't do this to me, it doesn't belong to me. And if it doesn't belong to me, it's not going to be about me. I thought, wow, this is incredible. And it was like I had just a breath of fresh air just hit me. I mean, I feel like I'm there at this moment and I could wipe away the tears and have confidence again. God didn't do this. So if God didn't do this, we can beat this because God will be for us no matter what. Yeah. And it's just exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very good. So what are some of the lessons that somebody that's going to pick up this book will learn? Well, One, God didn't do this to you, whatever it is you're walking through, whether it's a financial crisis, whether you lost your job, uh, whether you're walking through an illness, not necessarily cancer, but anything, you need to know that God doesn't do evil, yet God rescues us from all these evil attacks that can come upon us, number one. Number two, if you are dealing with cancer itself, I do talk about a healthy protocol, or if you're dealing with another medical situation, I do think there is something to taking care of the temple of God. So physically, there's a protocol that we have of natural ways to eat, so that's included in the book. It is spreckled with scripture. It is spreckled with what we call stringerisms or provoke (laughs) thoughts, which are very encouraging ways in just short little statements, one-liners that Doug has taught us along the way. It is stories of truth, and it is stories of people breaking down, having moments of breaking down, and saying, look, I don't know if I can get through this. Very candid moments of pain, but yet understanding that when you align yourself with God's Word, when you wash your mind with the Word of God, and when you have people that surround you, which I think is ever so important. Jesus had his three, then he had the disciples, Mm -hmm. then you have the multitudes that gathered. If you can just get those people around you that are going to speak Zoe life over you. You know, you don't need negativity. So you're going to be reminded to sometimes you prune for good. And sometimes, you know, it it may seem like a hurting of a pruning, you know, the pruning hurts, but it's going to be for the better. So it's going to be about who's surrounding you. What kind of people do you have around you? I hope it's going to be an encouragement. That's my prayer. And for those that don't know Jesus, in all sincerity, I pray that they encounter the living God. That's very good. 
Very good. That's something that we always want. We want to make sure that we drive things back to Jesus, no matter what circumstances we're in, uh, whether they be positive or negative. You know, we need to keep our focus on Jesus, and he's going to help see us through. That's right. I do want to add, too, I, I think that so many people, Doug often reminds me, as I mentioned earlier, that not everybody's story ends the same. So I do even mention in there, there's some people that were battling at the same time that we are were, and they went to be with the Lord. But what I want to say to those that know Jesus is you all know that we don't lose. You know, to be absent of the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. So we win, we're victorious, and we will meet again. To those that don't know Jesus, may they understand that there's a beautiful yeah. eternity for them if they so choose. Absolutely. And so that is, uh, you know, that in the midst of the challenge and in the midst of the trial, you still don't lose. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give anybody any false hope that because you read that this is what they did, that, you know, it's going to work for me. It's not a, it's not a formula. It's not a formula. Everybody's story is different, but no matter what, it's an encouragement. Yeah. I've been noticing that you say we got diagnosed with cancer. We went through this. Mm -hmm. It was in Doug's body, but you guys were together in this. And I love how you're taking ownership of it, even though nobody, neither of you guys were actually taking ownership or letting cancer be your identity. It was something right. that you were going through together, but you guys were doing it together. And I just appreciate even the way that you're describing that, that we did this together. We had this situation. We were diagnosed. We went through chemo. It's a great reminder that God isn't leaving us alone, and he is owning those things with us along our way. And actually, in you mentioning that, perhaps for anybody who is going through the trial, by no means can what we as caregivers understand fully what you all as patients um, have gone through. Yeah. I recognize that he's the one that had to endure the physical ailment, if you will, for the moment. But you're right, it is a we. And it's not just Doug and I. In, mm -hmm. in our case, because we're a married couple, it's Doug and I in the court of three. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's the Lord. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Um, for those that are alone, it's you and the Lord. You know, it's never a me, me, me. It, it definitely is a we. And, and remember, I think that one of the things that Doug appreciated afterwards, I believe, and, and not that he didn't appreciate it during yeah. two, is that we have to remember to love on those that are loving us whether they're yeah. friends or their family. And we may not realize it's the same thing when you're, when a spouse loses a job, if there is, if the Lord's in the center and may, and for others too, they may not realize that the Lord is there, mm -hmm. as you said earlier, because yeah. it's, you yeah. know, a road to Emmaus experience, you know, where you maybe haven't recognized fully yet who was walking with you, but everybody endures together. You know, it hurts yeah. both. We each carry our pain a different way. I'm just grateful that my husband allowed me. He never kicked me to the curb. He never said, you can't go with me. He allowed me to be with him every step of the way. Yeah. And it was not an option for me not to be there. It was an honor to serve. Yeah. Now, Lisa, one of the questions I always love asking during these conversations is, if you could go back in time now with the knowledge and experience that you have and sit down with young Lisa, whatever age that might be, and give younger Lisa advice, what would you tell yourself and where along your timeline would we intersect with your story? Man, I probably would go back to my teenage years. I'll see if I can do this without tears. <laughs> my dad's with the Lord. He's walking the streets of gold. He was a wise man. And I don't think I appreciated him enough mm. and his wisdom. He worked a lot. So it wasn't that I was never disrespectful. I just never took the time to sit at his feet. So I say to even someone your age, you're still so young. You, you know, I mean, you're mature, but yet you have so many decades in Jesus' yeah. name to live should he tarry. Don't hesitate to sit at the feet of spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers, to learn wisdom from even your enemy. Yeah. There's so much that could be learned. Then I would jump over possibly 10 years older. Although I walked in humility, I think as if you were to ask people about me, I don't think they would say I was a prideful girl. But when I look back, I realize I was a prideful girl. Remember yeah. I told you I came from, you know, lower middle or middle middle class sure. to financially successful, whatever right, that right. was in my eyes. I think I didn't want to listen again. I mean, it was all about my way or no way. And I just biggest advice is don't ever underestimate even the wisdom you can get from everything around you. Yeah. And the number one thing would be, I wish I would have been close to Jesus. Yeah. I wish I would have read more than just the scripture of the week. 
And I wish I would have realized the value of relationship with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Yeah. I'd be a whole nother person, but it's okay. I'm still okay <laughs> with it because I got a great husband, a great daughter, and I, I know who I am in Christ. And now I just get the privilege to serve him. Yeah. And that's a blessing. Do you think that young Lisa would have received that information well? Let's just say I'm quite sure when I get up to heaven, uh, I have a pastor friend in Sao Paulo, Brazil, who tells me, when you get to heaven, you're going to see your life friend rewind before the Lord. And then he's going to show you another film of what it should have been. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I don't even want to know <laughs> how many times I fell. So with that being said, I'm sure that the Lord tried to knock on my door plenty yeah. of times and I ignored it. I, I can't answer you truthfully. Yeah. I just wish that I would have listened because I'm sure he tried to reach me. Yeah. You know, life is full of woulda, shoulda, coulda. Mm-hmm. But that's not where we're at today. And today is a day that we can choose to change our direction. We can choose to continue to walk with the Lord. We can choose to say that God did not do this to me. This situation that I'm in is not from God, but I can hold on to God and he's going to pull me through. That's right. What is a life verse that you have that you've clung to and said, God, this is true. I believe that this is truth, whether it looks like it or not. What What is a verse that you've held on to well, like that? My favorite verse, period, for me, which has been for probably 15 years now, again, you know, somewhere along the line as I got grow deeper in relationship with Christ, is Acts 20, 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to mm-hmm. me. I had everything, but it's worth nothing to me if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the glory of the grace of God. And I, I say that in the sense that at this point, Jesus saved me from the pits. He saved me potentially from going. I'd never done drugs, never been drunk, but he saved me possibly from jail yeah. because I was around people that were doing all these stupid things thinking it was okay because they're the celebrities. They were the people right. in Hollywood. He saved me from, you know, you could think about it. It could have been suicide because of depression. He saved me from so many things and he has put me aside a righteous man of God who is imperfect but loves God and mm-hmm. who's taught me that together we can do anything. And I didn't mean that imperfect as a diss. <laughs> I'm saying that in the sense that, you know, we say, you know, I don't want to catapult him as some perfect saint. He's a man of God who tells you I'm imperfect, but God's perfect in me. Yeah. And if I keep my focus on him, I can be the best I can. I can be. So I say that to say that my scripture is keeping my focus on Jesus. And at this point, I live that people may know the Savior that I know. Amen. That, that even my ex-husband and anyone that he did me wrong with may know Jesus, that they may celebrate in heaven someday. With regards to hope for people, I highlighted a scripture in Malachi 4.2. And for those who are battling sickness, illness, who really are at their wit's end or wondering why, the scripture I would give him is Malachi 4.2. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. You rise. You rise with Jesus. Yeah. He will launch you to places you can't even imagine, whether on earth or in heaven. And uh, that's the encouragement I would leave people with. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I know that there's a lot of different places that people listen to podcasts, different situations, whether it be in the car or just whether doing things around the house. But if you could have somebody's full attention right now and you want to just tell them about the Jesus that met you and has changed your life, I just want to give you that opportunity to use that microphone to speak to that one person. Well, whether you're in South Africa, whether you're in Haiti, whether you're working out at the gym, whether you're on the job on the break at, you know, a, a, a store, or a coffee shop, um, I just want to tell you, Jesus loves you. Not just God loves you, but specifically Jesus loves you. To those of you that don't know what it's like to have a father, there's a father in heaven that adores you and is seeking after you and loves you and believes in you. To those of you that have struggled with physical abuse by your spouse, by your parent, by your friend, you need to know that that's not where it's at, that there is someone who wants to rescue you from that that you just need to reach out to him right where you're at. There are people all around. You can pick up a Bible. There's Bibles everywhere. If you don't have one, go to a bookstore. Uh (laughs) Borrow theirs for a moment. There's churches down the street. Ask God into your life. Ask him if he's real. My husband has always said to us, when you go to people, don't be preachy. 
just be the hands and feet of Jesus. So right now, I'm just the mouthpiece of Jesus yeah. saying, I want you. I need you. I want relationship with you. I desire you. I can transform your life. I can give you a hope and a future that'll blow you away. Just accept me as the Lord and Savior, as the Son of the one true living God. My husband also tells us, instead of preaching, he says, you can say this. And so I say this to you. Ask if you question, is there really a God? God, if you are who you say you are, if you're real, then show yourself to me. And God will find his way. He will reveal himself to you. He will find ways to touch you. Just open your eyes and see. And then there's churches everywhere that you can go yeah. ask questions. They can reach out to you via this podcast and ask questions. I'm quite sure you'll answer them. <laughs> uh, there's people all around that want to love you. And I just I just want to welcome you as family. And, and for those of you that are wiping tears off your eyes because you said yes to Jesus, I say congratulations. It's going to be the best move you could have ever made. I was sad, but now I'm glad. I was full of tears, and now my tears are full of joy. I was in love with money, and now I could care less if I clip coupons and shop at Walmart, so long <laughs> as I go to Chick-fil-A every now and then. So I welcome you into our family, the Absolutely. family of Christ. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa. That was, that was good. You know, we've, we've talked about forgiveness. We've talked about discipleship. We've talked about not blaming God and, and saying that God has not done this to me. I just appreciate what you just shared. And anybody that re- that wants to reach out, uh, you know, you can always email me at johnalongtheway at gmail dot com, and uh, I'll do my best to get back to you. And Lisa, uh, if people want to get your book, how do they get that? If they're available for pre order, they'll be, uh, be available for shipping as of, or probably have it in your hands by June second. But they're available for pre order at most bookstore outlets. I won't even begin to name them. They're available everywhere. They're also on the Amazon and, okay. and Barnes and Noble. And hopefully, for those of you that like to support the smaller Christian bookstores, we're all about that. And they're available all over the world. Yeah. So just find your way. And if not, you can definitely email John, and he'll make sure to direct you somewhere. I'll make sure to put the <laughs> to put a link in the, in the podcast right. show notes here. So. Lisa, thank you so much for spending this time with me and allowing me to join you along your way. Amen. It was an honor and a pleasure, and we will be praying for uh, your audience and looking forward to listening to more podcasts with you and your guest. Being able to know God in a way that you are able to say that God did not do this to me is a powerful place to be. Oftentimes, we just blame God when things don't go our way. I know I'm guilty of that way more often than I'd like to admit. The fact that Lisa's husband, Doug, was able to say that God did not do this to me is a powerful statement, and it set the course for their family to deal with the cancer diagnosis. Lisa had a lot of opportunities that she could have just stayed in one place where she was blaming God for her situations. She had made it to the top of her field in the radio industry, and I'm still having trouble computing the fact that she would hop on a plane in LA and fly to the East Coast just to have a breakfast meeting with Mariah Carey. That's pretty impressive. Lisa had it all, but then things fell apart. Life certainly has its shares of ups and downs, but God can redeem the down times for us if we let him. Lisa went through very rough seasons in her life that could have easily taken her out, but when we recorded this interview, I could see the joy of the Lord in her face and in her voice as we were talking. When she talked about the storms in her life, there wasn't bitterness or resentment towards those who have wronged her. She walks in forgiveness and freedom. When we hold on to unforgiveness, it's like us taking poison and expecting the other person to die. It doesn't work that way. If Lisa's story brought someone to your mind that you need to forgive, I implore you to do that right away and even pray that God will bless them. I know it's not easy, but God can and will give you the grace that you need to do what is right. Just ask him for help. Remember, God did not do this to you. And if God did not do this, you can beat this. I hope you remember that next time trials come your way. If you would like to get a copy of Lisa's book, I'll be providing a link in the show notes where you can order that, as well as a link to their organization, Somebody Cares. Thank you for listening to Along the Way. If you've enjoyed joining me along my way, please share this episode with a friend who you think will be encouraged by this podcast. Also, please rate and review Along the Way on iTunes. 
that helps more people discover along the way. And subscribe to this show wherever you listen to your podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and at my website, alongtheway.media. I hope you've enjoyed this part of my journey, and may you realize when Jesus is walking with you along your way. Thank you.